Now I'd like to welcome our, our last speaker of this afternoon. Uh, it is Antonio Camara. He's from the University of Brasilia in Brazil, and he will talk about conservative and surgical treatment of long bone fractures in cattle, I think. Yes, yes, please. Thank you, Professor, for the introduction. Good afternoon. Fractures in ruminants occur often, relative, occurs with relative frequency, and becomes routine in large animal practice sometimes. Fractures present a higher incidence in younger animals and are associated to trauma during dystocia or mother stepping. And limb fractures occur more often than fractures of the axial skeleton. The decision between treatment and euthanasia must consider the economic value and genetic value of the animal, location and type of fracture, cost of treatment, and prognosis. Treatment choice includes stall rest, external coaptation, external fixation, and open reduction with internal fixation, depending on the type of fracture and the bone involved. Therefore, the present study aimed to report the main locations of limb fractures in 36 ruminants and to determine the efficiency of the treatment choices. We perform a retrospective study on limb fractures in two Brazilian veterinary chinchi hospitals during a two-year period. Uh, the first one was Federal Rural University of the Semi-Arid, located in, at Mossoró, Rio Grande do Norte, contributing to, with 22 cases. And the other one was Brasilia University, located in Brasilia, Federal District, with 14 cases. We included 15 sheep, 12 cattle, and nine goats. Conservative treatment was performed in 21, 21 ruminants, which 17 of them presented distal fractures below the carpal, radial, and tarsal tibial joints. And we also performed the conservative treatment in unique cases of humerus, radial, tibia, and femur fractures because of the impossibility to do the surgical treatment. Uh, Conservative treatment consisted of full limb cast or full limb cast and Thomas sprint combination. To perform the full limb cast, we sedated the animal and restrained it in lateral recubescence with the broken limb up, cleaned the limb, and then we performed uh, traction to obtain bone alignment and did the full limb cast with tubular mesh, orthopedic cotton, compressive bandage, adhesive tape. In seven cases, all limbs and kids we performed, we used tongue depressors because of the low body weight of the animals to maintain bone alignment and mobilization. In some cases, when it was ab available, you also used fiberglass material. Here, we can see a metacarpal fracture in a limb before and after traction and bone alignment and mobilization. We perform full limb cast and Thomas sprint association in 14 cases, all calves, and adult small ruminants, sheep and goats. Uh, we, did the, we used the same material earlier described with the addition of a one centimeter, one centimeter diameter steel bar that was shaped in the leg, in the form of the leg of the animal. And we also included plaster bandage or fiberglass material to immobilize the, the member, the limb. 
to make the medial support ring, we used gas or garden hose that was fixed to the splint with adhesive or silver tape, which was also used to coat all the steel and prevent injuries in the limb. Here we can see the final appearance of the Thomas splint and full limb cast combination. In 12 ruminants with proximal or exposed distal fractures, we performed the surgical treatment following specific anesthetic protocols. Uh, treatment options included external fixation, intramedular pins, and plating screws in five, three, and one ruminants respectively. In the two left figures, we can see a tibial fracture in a goat before and after surgery with transcortical pins and external fixation. In the right side, we can see a femur fracture also in a goat that we use, we use a intramedular pin and transcortical pins beside sidebars to maintain immobilization. In three cases with severe bone necrosis and soft tissue damage, we perform limb amputation. And here it's one calf that before and after surgery and uh, one ewe that was five months after surgery. He, uh, it can deambulate properly, even with three legs. Our results shows that the higher frequency of fractures occurred in the metacarpus and metatarsus with 44%, followed by fractures of the tibia with 28%, femur with 14%, sorry, radio with 14%, and femur with 8%, followed by unique cases of medial phalanx, phalanx and humerus fractures. Conservative treatment achieved 95.4% success rate, and surgical treatment achieved 100% uh, success rate. Three ruminants were euthanized by owner's request or financial restraints. Overall recovery rate achieved 88.9%. In these cases, the most frequent complications were cast sores, dropped feet lock in the contralateral limb, osteomyelitis in H2 and 2 ruminants respectively, in all treated animals, we observed some degree of muscle atrophy that was that the, bio, the normal biomechanical movement of the limb was recovered in six weeks at the most with uh, exercise. So we can conclude that our results confirm that ruminants are excellent orthopedic patients because of great bone healing properties, limb immobilization tolerance, and rare contralateral limb disorders. The use of full limb cast or Thomas sprint limb cast combinations was appropriate for conservative treatment of fractures distal to the elbow and strength in some ruminants from the study. And it was also effective for treatment of humerus, radius, and tibia fractures in young small ruminants. We also conclude that internal or external skeleton fixation should be considered an option in the treatment of metacarpal, metatarsal, tibial, and femoral fractures in ruminants, especially in low body weight animals. Thank you for the attention, and I will respond to any question. Thank you very much for this nice presentation. Thank you. There is a question over here. Thank you. Um, obviously, yeah, the, a few people do 
uh, limb amputa amputations on um, sheep routinely enough. But um, obviously, I saw you amputated the leg on a calf. Do you know what the long-term outcome for that, that calf was as he grew? We contact the owner, uh, and he said that the, ca the calf can get... Uh, I'm sorry, let me reformulate the phrase. Uh, we contact the owner, and the, the, he said that the cow, the calf got older, and become a hoof, and then he can, uh, he could, uh, li get her to the abattoir, abattoir, yeah, abattoir, yeah, about two hundred and fifty pound uh, kilos. It, the, 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 the scarf was the unique case. The others were small ruminants. Mm -hmm. Sorry for my English. <laughs> no problem. There is a question here. Hello, I'm Louise from the Netherlands. And uh, I was wondering if I got a 200 kilo Holstein Frisian heifer and unfortunately she's been jumped on by another and broke her um, tibia and radius, for instance, or another fracture. Um, what sort of weight cut off an age would you use to consider still doing a splint or cast? In this particular case, it, we disarticulated in the humerus radial joint and then saw the head of the humerus to, and then we leave enough muscle to make a bad cutting in the bone and i guess it's the same you are asking if you got a radio you have to go above almost in the humerus because the head of the humerus is too large and you can cover with the muscle so you have to take it off what sort of uh, weight or age range do you think it's still um, applicable to uh, that's the main problem because we just tested this in young animals just when we are talking cattle we just use it calves uh, and the most heavy the heaviest was 120 kilos with conservative treatment this one that was had that we had performed limb amputation was young but she, she uh, it could live for long to be Cool it. If I don't know if I answer your question. <laughs> Thank you. Any other question? Please. Hi. Um, just one. Yeah. Ah, hi. Hi. Um, just wondering how long you leave the casts on the calves, um, and if you worry about them growing and needing to change the cast. In the lumps and kids. We, because it was easier, because uh, there was no fiberglass material or plaster, it was just uh, adhesive tape and tongue depressors. It was very easy to perform the change every 20 days. But when we, in the calves that was, that they were heavier, we performed this monthly. Okay, there is a last question here. Hello, Katarzyna Siewruk, Poland. Uh, I'm very, very um, happy to hear your presentation. And I would like to know, you showed us one of the lamps after external fixation, it was external fixator. Yeah, uh, did this lamp uh, stay in a hospital or? No. And when did you remove the external fixator? The owner was advised to return. Mm -hmm after monthly to radiographs. So then we, I guess in this case, particular case, we removed after 50 days, 50. after bone consolidation with the radiographics. Mm -hmm. And was there any uh, post-operative management like analgesics or antibiotics? Yeah. In the surgical cases, we performed uh, phonic semaglumine 
For how long? Sorry, set up our friend uh -huh. for three days, uh, mix it with opioids like tramadol, and we also perform uh, ceftriofu for antibiotics. Mm -hmm. In the conservative treatment cases, without uh, without uh, open fractures, just conservative treatment, we just perform non-inflammatory drugs in Phonixin or Phenylbutazone uh, for three days also. Did you have any complications related with external fixation in that lamp? In the, this one? Mm -hmm. No, no. We just have the two osteomyelitis problems were one with the plates and screws and the other one, if I can remember right, it, uh, yeah, so with external fixation, one with external fixation. But it was twin, uh, pin tract infection and mm -hmm. we can use some anti-infection uh, anti solutions to every day and it was okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very, very much again for your answers. I would like to thank all the speakers of the afternoon for participating Thanks. and you as an audience for participating.